Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam saying, Verily, the deeds are based on intentions. And verily, every person is rewarded according to what he intends. So whoever makes his hijrah for Allah and his messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, then truly his hijrah and his migration is towards Allah and his messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And whoever has his hijrah or makes his hijrah towards the dunya for the worldly benefit, or he makes a hijrah in order to marry a woman, then his hijrah is towards what he migrated to, meaning that he will not be rewarded and he cannot be rewarded the same reward as the other person who makes the hijrah for the sake of Allah, Dul Jalali Wal Ikram. So last week we went through this hadith and we mentioned that uh, when it comes to the hijrah, there are certain rules and regulations within the Sharia. And we also mentioned the Hijrah is one of the greatest good deeds. Hijrah is such a good deed, such a great good deed, that our Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam has said, In the Hijrah Tatahdimu Makana Kablaha. The person who makes the Hijrah because of the hijrah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgives all of his previous, all of his past sins. All of the sins are forgiven because of the hijrah. And there are only few things by which your previous deeds or all of your previous sins are forgiven. One of them is to accept Islam. The person who is not a Muslim and being a non-Muslim, he has committed so many sins, many, many evil acts. And now he wants to enter into the fold of Islam and by saying, Ashadu an la ilaha illallah wa ashadu anna Muhammad rasulullah from his tongue and believing in his heart, he enters into the fold of Islam. As soon as he accepts Islam, all of his previous sins are forgiven. So he starts with new clean sheet, completely. So there is no sin on him. So all of his previous, all of previous sins are forgiven. The other good deed by which the previous sins are forgiven is the tawbah and the repentance. When you repent to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, all of your previous sins are forgiven. And you start with clean slate completely. And the third one is the hijrah. When you make the hijrah for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then Allah dhul jalal ikram forgives all of your previous sins. And because the hijrah is one of the greatest good deeds, it must be as, for, as it is the case for any good deed, it must be solely and purely for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The person should not be making hijrah for anything else or for any worldly gain. It must be solely for the sake of Allah Dhul Jalal Ikram. What does hijrah mean? The lexical or linguistic meaning of the word hijrah is to abandon or to give up. And the scholars have said that hijrah or the term hijrah in the Sharia is used in three different ways. The first one is the hijrah that is common term that you migrate from one place to another place. And the, as a term within the Sharia, it means that you leave the place of kufr, the place or the country or the region where you cannot practice your religion. You cannot practice your religion. You cannot, you cannot establish salah. You cannot offer your salah, you cannot pay zakah, you cannot travel for hajj, you cannot fast. Basic and fundamentals of Islam cannot be established. Then you have to make hijrah. Then in this case, you have to leave that place, you have to leave that country and go to another place where you can 
practice your religion. And you can establish these pillars of Islam, these sha'air of Islam, these symbols of Islam. So this is the hijrah. And it is made from one place, from Darul Kufr, from the place where there is no Islam, to the place where there is Islam. From the place where you cannot practice your religion to the place where you can freely practice your religion. And it must be solely and purely for the sake of Allah and in order to practice the religion of Islam. And when you make the intention to leave that place and to migrate to another place where you think that you can practice Islam, for that it it must be solely and purely for the sake of Allah and you should not be looking for any worldly gain, for any worldly benefit. If this is your intention, then your hijrah is not going to be the shari hijrah. It's not going to be the hijrah that is accepted by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or the hijrah for which you can be rewarded. So this is very important to understand. Nowadays, we find many people living in the West and living particularly in the UK. They talk about the concept of hijrah. Many of them say that I want to make hijrah to Saudi Arabia. I want to make hijrah to uh, one of the Middle Eastern countries. I want to make hijrah to Somalia. I want to make my hijrah to Pakistan or to any other country. Why do you want to make the hijrah? Because I cannot practice the religion of Islam here the way I can practice over there. What is your criterion of practicing the religion? Can you not establish your salah here? Do you not have the freedom to establish your five daily prayers? Is there any kind of, any kind of restriction on you that you cannot offer your daily salah? Is there any kind of restriction on you that you cannot attend the masjid? Is there any, any kind of restriction on you that you cannot establish your five daily prayers in congregation in the masjid? Is there, any, is there any restriction that you cannot attend the masjid for Salatul Jum'ah? Do you not have the freedom to offer Salatul Eid openly? Can you not pay your zakah while living in the UK? Can you not observe the fasting of the month of Ramadan while living in the UK? Can you not travel for Hajj and Umrah while living in the UK? The answer would be, no, I don't have any, any of these restrictions. I can freely practice my religion. Then what is the purpose of making Hijrah? The purpose is that here in this country, there is too much tax. There is too much tax. The education system is corrupt. I have this problem and that problem. Okay, if this is a problem, then... It has nothing to do with you practicing the religion of Islam. Even when it comes to giving the tarbiyah to your children. When it comes to giving the tarbiyah to your children. How can you differentiate between the UK, between this country and any other country? When it comes to giving the tarbiyah to your children. It is all down to your efforts as a parent. You have to take your time out and spend some time with your children. Advise them. Give them tarbiyah. It does not mean that the families that live in other countries that are known as the Muslim countries, that their children are always pious and righteous and they always give good tarbiyah to your children because of the environment. This is not true. This is not the case. If you truly want to see the condition of the Muslim countries, so-called Muslim countries, go over there. And, and also you should bear in mind, this is very important to understand, that the hijrah is usually made, or primarily it is made from the place where you cannot practice the religion, mainly Darul Kufr, the place where there is no Islam, and you go to the place where is Islam. When you say there is Islam, or you, can, you go to the country of Islam, it means that, it, that, that, that you, can, you can witness and you can see Islam everywhere. That is called Darul Islam. 
Darul Islam is not the place where vast majority of the population is Muslim and you cannot call it simply Darul Islam. Darul Islam is where usury and riba is prohibited. Darul Islam is where there is no shirk. Darul Islam is where people practice the religion of Islam and they follow the Quran and the Sunnah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Darul Islam is where everyone's rights are given. Darul Islam is where alcohol is prohibited. Which country in this world, in this age and time, you can point out and you can say it is Darul Islam? Any of the Middle Eastern countries? Pakistan? Somalia? Any other country? Which country can you actually say that it is Darul Islam? That you can see Darul Islam in the houses, you can see Darul Islam in the courts, you can see Darul Islam in the streets, you can see Darul Islam in the marketplaces. Where is Islam? You cannot call Darul Islam a country where the vast majority of the people or the, or the, or, 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 or the population is just Muslims. Yes, you can say that place is probably better or practicing the religion is probably easier than practicing the religion in any other country where there is minority of the Muslims. And then in this case, you cannot say then, according to the scholars, then you cannot say that making hijrah from Darul Kufr to Darul Islam or making hijrah from a country where they are not Muslim or Muslims are in minority to making the hijrah to the country where Muslims are in majority, according to the scholar, this is just mustahab. It's recommended. But it's, again, it is recommended for those who cannot who cannot practice their religion the way they want to practice their religion in the Darul Kufr. But if they have all the freedom, then talking about the hijrah or saying I want to make hijrah, then it is, it is not correct. Or then it means that you need to study more about the hijrah. Look at the seerah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa the scholars have even said, based on the evidence from the seerah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam, that hijrah does not necessarily need to be made to a place where there is Islam or Darul Islam. Hijrah can be made from Darul Kufr to Darul Kufr. From one place where there is Kufr to another place where there is also Kufr. But in first place you cannot practice the religion, but in other place you can practice so main point is or the main reason for making hijrah must be the practice of the religion. This is the core. This is the fundamental. This is the, this is the basic and this is the main reason. So if you cannot practice your religion in, in a place or in a country, then definitely you should try your best to make the hijrah to another country where there is Islam and where you have freedom to practice your religion. Why is this? This is because we know from the seerah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam that during the life of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam, the first hijrah was made from Makkah al mukarrama to Abyssinia. Makkah al mukarrama there was no Islam in Makkah al mukarrama and there was no Islam in Abyssinia as well. But the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam sent some of his companions from Mecca to Abyssinia, from Darul Kufr to Darul Kufr. Why? Because practicing the religion in Mecca al mukarrama was not possible. Whereas practicing the religion in Abyssinia, which was at that time a Christian country, it was possible. And then later, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa when he made the hijrah from Makkah al mukarrama to Medina al munawwara was Medina Darul Islam? It was not Darul Islam. Rather, when Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa arrived in Medina al munawwara then it changed to Darul Islam. Darul Islam. In fact, Medina al munawwara was not called Medina. Rather, it was known as Yathrib. As Yathrib is one of the names of Medina al munawwara so before the arrival of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam in Medina al munawwara and before changing al Medina to Darul Islam, it was known as Yathrib. 
So it was not according to these terms. Medina Munawwara was not Darul Islam. Rather, the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam arrived in in Yathrib, and then he established Islam, where he sallallahu alaihi wasallam was supported by the people of Medina, by the Ansar. who supported the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam in fact they offered the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam their support when he sallallahu alaihi wasallam was in in makkah al mukarrama and then he sallallahu alaihi wasallam made up his mind by the permission of allah dul jalal al karam and he left makkah al mukarrama he went, he went to madina al munawwara and he and he sallallahu alaihi wasallam settled there also another point that we need to bear in mind when to when we talk about the topic of hijra that once you have left a country a place a region because of the reason that you cannot practice your religion in that region and you have gone to another place where you think you can practice your religion better then it is not right for you to come back to that country again until or unless the situation in that country has completely changed and it has gone better then the country that you have migrated to so for example if you have left the uk based on the reason that you cannot practice your religion you think that you cannot practice whereas the reality is that you have complete freedom to practice your religion everything you can do here so you left this country and you went to pakistan for example and you said that i have made hijra okay you try your best to settle in pakistan but you were not able so and then few years later you decide to come back to the uk what type of hijra is this this na hijra has uk changed according to your understanding uk may have gone worse then why are you coming back then you initially thought that uk is darul kufr and pakistan is darul islam and you have migrated you have made hijra from the uk to pakistan now you have to spend your life there look at the sunnah of rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam when the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam migrated from makkah al mukarrama to, to medina al munawwara even after the conquest of makkah al mukarrama he sallallahu alaihi wasallam never returned back he stayed there and this was one of the reason that he sallallahu alaihi wasallam migrated from makkah al mukarrama to medina al munawwara although the other reason was that he initially had promised the people of medina that if allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ever allows him the victory he will never forsake them and he will he, he will never leave them so he sallallahu alaihi wasallam fulfilled his promise but when we study the seerah of the companions ridwanullahi alaihi majma'in we come to know that they they also remained in medina al munawwara and some of them who came back to makkah al mukarrama who settled in makkah al mukarrama later it was based on the fact that makkah was darul islam so that makkah had become darul islam completely that is why some of the companions they returned back to makkah al mukarrama so once you have left so the principle is that we understand from the seerah and from the hadith of rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam that once you have left a region a country a place because of the fact or your understanding that you cannot practice the religion and you migrated to another place where you thought you can practice the religion better then you should not come back to that country until and unless the situation in that country has changed and now that country is better for you to practice the religion of islam better than the situation in which you left that country so when we consider all these aspects of the hijra then you will come to realize that alhamdulillah living in the uk you are blessed and you must be thankful to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and there is no doubt out of all the european countries and throughout the west the uk is the best place for the muslims the freedom that we have here alhamdulillah you cannot find in any other european country the way the muslims practice their religion here they cannot practice the same way in any other european countries and even some of the so called muslim countries 
the freedom that you have in this country, you cannot find in many, in many Muslim countries. Your basic rights, your basic rights are not given to you in those so-called Muslim countries. And here you have all the rights. You have completely equal right as the nationals and the natives of, the, of this country. So then, what is the point and what is the need of making hijrah? Yes, if you want to settle in another country based on other reasons or due to other facts, then it's up to you. Then at least do not call it hijrah. Do not misuse or abuse the word hijrah. Hijrah is a... The hijrah is a good deed, is, is a concept within Islam. You need to first and foremost understand it properly because you, you do not understand and you want to make hijrah and hijrah and you think you are going to be rewarded. And how many people I have seen here talking about the hijrah, I want to make hijrah to this country and that country. Why are you not making them? I, I, I'm, I'm, just, I'm just looking for a job. As soon as they get the job, I will make the hijrah. Subhanallah. What type of hijrah is this? Is this the way of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam? Did the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam look for his job? Or he, did he sallallahu alayhi wasallam ask any of his companions to look for the job and work in Medina al-Munawwara before they would migrate to Medina al-Munawwara before they leave Makkah al-Mukarramah? So if you want to leave the UK in order to avoid the tax or if you want to leave the UK because of any other reason or you want to get a better job in one of the Middle Eastern countries in Malaysia, in Singapore, in China, in Japan or, any, or, or in any other country then do so there's no prohibition as long as you can practice the, as long as you can practice your religion there freely you can do it but don't try to justify your personal reasons as the hijrah and don't try to say that I'm going to make hijrah for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is not the hijrah for the sake of Allah. Rather, this is the hijrah for the job. This is the hijrah for worldly gain. And you should bear in mind this hadith of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa that many of the scholars have quoted right at the beginning of their books. Including Imam An Nawawi rahimahullah in his book Riyadh Salihin. فَمَنْ كَانَتْ هِجْرَتُهُ لِدُنْيَا يُصِيبُهَا أَوْ إِمْرَأَةٍ يَنْكِحُهَا فَهِجْرَتُهُ إلَى مَا هَجَرَ إلَيْهِ Whoever makes the hijrah for this dunya, for this worldly gain, for worldly benefit, or he makes the hijrah in order to marry a woman, and the woman that he wants to marry. She has stipulated that you cannot marry me until and unless you leave that country and you come to my country. And she lives in the in another country that is known as Muslim country. Then you leave your country for this purpose. Then your hijrah is for marriage. Your hijrah is not for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Which does not necessarily mean that you are going to be sinful. This does not mean that you are going to be sinful, but it does not also mean that you are going to be rewarded for that. Because your hijrah is for worldly benefit. So this is first type of hijrah. Hijratul makan, it is known as hijratul makan. You leave a place and you migrate from one place to another place in order to practice the religion of Allah, in order to establish the religion of Allah, subhanahu wa ta'ala. The second type of hijrah is that is known as Hijratul Amal. Hijrah, as I said, Hijrah means to abandon, to give up. The Hijrah of the actions and the deeds. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has said in a hadith that is reported by Imam al-Bukhari rahimahullah, Al-Muslimu man salim al-Muslimun min lisanihi wa yadih. The true Muslim is the one from whose hand and from whose tongue other Muslims are saved. And then he وسلم, said, وَالْمُهَاجِرُ مَنْ هَجَرَ مَا نَهَ اللَّهُ عَنْهُ وَرَسُولُهُ The true muhajir, the real muhajir is the one who makes the hijrah or who abandons and gives up every single sin and evil act 
from which Allah and his messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam have prohibited. So if you give up sins, if you give up bad deeds, if you give up evil acts, then it is also hijrah. And the Prophet sallallahu said, wal muhajir, the person who makes the hijrah is called muhajir. The true muhajir is the one who makes the hijrah of the actions, who makes the hijrah of his deeds, who makes the hijrah of his acts, and, his, and, 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 uh, and he makes the hijrah of his conduct. He better, he, he, he improves his akhlaq, he gives up the sin, then he is a true muhajir. So this is the second type of hijrah. The third one is the hijrah of amil. Amil, the person who does something is called amil. The hijrah of the person, meaning you abandon the person who commits a sin. Why? Because his sin may affect you. Or you abandon the person because of his evil acts. You stay away from him. And it is permissible. It is permissible only if you want to protect yourself, you want to safeguard your own iman and your chastity and your akhlaq, your character, your reputation. If this is the case, then it is fine for you to leave the person who is committing evil acts. So you refrain from him, you abandon him, you leave him. Then in this case, it is, it is permissible. Another way of leaving the person who commits evil acts is that you believe or you know that his actions are not going to affect you, but you really want him to give up those bad deeds and those sins. In this case, you can again abandon him, you can cut ties with him only with the condition that if you think that your abandoning him and your cutting ties with him will affect him so that he may understand, he may take lessons and he gives up that evil act and he stays with you. In this case, you can. In this, with this particular condition, you can abandon the person. You can refrain from him. You can stay away from him for a few days, for a few weeks and even for a few months. Only if you know looking at his circumstances and looking at your position with him, you think and you believe that if you abandon him, if you cut ties with him, if you cut links with him, it will affect him to the extent that he will give up his bad deeds and he will give up his evil acts, then in this case you can abandon him. Otherwise, otherwise it is not permissible. It is not permissible to abandon another Muslim. As Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, لا يحل لمؤمن أن يهجر أخاه فوق ثلاث ليال It is not permissible, it is not halal for a Muslim to abandon, to make the hijrah. Hijrah means to abandon, to give up, to leave. It is not permissible for a Muslim person to leave his Muslim brother for more than three nights, for more than three days. Okay? If your intention is not to give him a lessons or teach him lessons so that he can give up his evil acts and your intention is also not to protect your own iman and you know that his evil acts are not affecting your iman or your akhlaq, then in this case you should not abandon him. Rather, you stay in contact with him in order to continue advising him so that he one day may accept your advice and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala may guide him that he may come back to the straight path again. So they are the three types of hijrah and we talked about the first one which is hijratul makan, hijrah of one place to another place. The second one is hijratul amal, the hijrah of the actions and the deeds and the third one is hijratul amil. Okay, and we talked about all these types of hijrah and there are evidences for that for all of them in the hadith of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So we conclude with this and we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that Allah dhul jalal ikram enables us to understand 
the religion of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us the correct understanding of his religion. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us tawfiq and ability to follow the footsteps of our Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allow us to keep our intentions pure and sincere for his sake. Innahu sami'un qareebun mujib. Wa sallillahum wa barik ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in. Subhanak Allahumma wa bihamdik. Ashadu an la ilaha illa and astaghfiruk wa atubu ilayk. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.